It is Friday, and it's September 9th, and it's 2022, and this is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome. As we continue in the Abram cycle of stories, we come now to chapter 14. Abram has gotten steadily more affluent and abundant in his blessings from God. Uh, using the starter set that he got from Pharaoh, apparently. He has many flocks, and he's got all kinds of wealth. Uh, You know that his nephew Lot has been part of the story, if you've read some of the in-between material. And Lot and Abram are, well, rich enough now that their flocks are competing with each other, so they decide to split up. Lot, in fact, decides to go live in the city. Now, you need to know that In ancient Israel, there was kind of a suspicion of cities. They were people who wandered. They were Arameans who went from place to place. And so cities, well, they were a place of power and armies and violence. And so Lot's choice to go to the city doesn't seem a wise one. Abram continues to tend his flocks and wander from place to place. In that time, there are little kingdoms all over the place in the Middle East, and they all start to fight one another. And we learn that there are all kinds of kings that have now joined up with one another to fight one another. And Lot gets kind of swept up in the action here. And so as several kings defeat several other kings, they capture Lot and his family, and they take them captive because they got caught in the crossfire. The story picks up today and says when Abram heard that his nephew had been taken captive, he led forth his trained men, born in his house, 318 of them. Now let's stop there for a minute. I got to think that five kings and their armies are probably a lot more than 318 people. So Abram takes 318 people up against all these kings. He divided his forces, making them smaller yet. By night, he and his servants, and he routed the kings and all of the enemies. He pursued them, pushed them back as far as he could, and then he brought back all the goods, all the goods that they left behind as they fled. And he brought back Lot, his nephew, with his goods and his women and his people. So he returns to the land that he's been sojourning in after he defeats these kings with just 318 men. And we hear that King Melchizedek of Salem, which will become later Jerusalem, brought out bread and wine to give thanks for his victory. For Melchizedek, unlike most places, was also the high priest. He was the high priest of the God Most High, which is a way of talking about the same God that Abram worships. The king and the priest, Melchizedek, blesses Abraham and says, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Hearing this blessing, Abram's response is to give to God, through the priest Melchizedek, one-tenth of everything that he has. He tithes. Now, the interesting thing here, chronologically speaking, is that this is far before any time when the tithe is set in Scripture. Abram tithes because he's grateful. He's thankful. Abram tithes because it's the right thing to do. And that's a lesson in gratitude. He gives a tenth of everything. Now, one of the other kings comes, it happens to be the king of Sodom, and says, please give me the people, the persons who've been caught up in this, that I may take them home. You can keep all of the goods, because you defeated us. Abraham's response is to say, no, take everything. Uh, Give us what the men have had to use to survive, but take everything back, because I don't ever want to hear And God does not want to hear that Abram became rich because of you. Abram becomes rich because of God's blessings. Abraham says, I will take nothing but what the young men have eaten and the share of the men who sent me. You did not make me rich. We find in this story 
uh, a graciousness that's part of the faithfulness of Abram uh, when he's not letting his wife play the sister. <laughs> he courageously protects his own family. He leads his people effectively. And when it comes time, he gives thanks to God generously and abundantly and then wants nothing to do with the spoils and the profit of war. He's a man of peace and faith and hope. Abraham has much to teach us in this world about those things. May we learn from him. Let us pray. Gracious God, Father Abram trusted in you enough to use a small band of men to protect his nephew and family. He used a small band of men to push back on the evil of the age. And when riches came into his lap from that, he gave it all back. He gave a tenth to you and he claimed nothing for his own because everything he had came from you. May we do the same. Be gracious in our giving to you and also be thankful and depend upon only you to give us what we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.